welcome to the course business analytics and text mining modeling using python so in previous uh, lecture we were uh, we talked about a number of steps uh, related to uh, you know transforming unstructured text uh, stemming lemmatization and many other aspects as well now we'll uh, continue our discussion uh, on some of these transformation steps rather uh, we'll like to combine whatever we have discussed till now so all the transformation steps that we have been able to cover in previous few lectures we will like to combine them in 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 uh, in, in one uh, you know uh, in in, a, in one function uh, so let's do that so specifically we'll be combining combining this expanding contractions pure tagging lemmatization special character removal stop word removal and tokenization so uh, for this uh, these are some of the uh, you know modules that we might require re nltk string and uh, you can see uh, next thing is load all the english stop words so this will be referring to uh, then uh, contraction mapping contraction map we have already you know uh, you know defined so that will also be used then lemmatizer uh, this uh, word net uh, word net lemmatizer one instance of this class wnl1 we would be using here then next is uh, you know a tokenized uh, you know text this this uh, function we used in the previous lecture also so uh, nothing is special in this it is just a wrapper for this our nltk dot word underscore tokenize and uh, for you know this is being called for a, a list of tokens in a sense so you can see a list comprehension there as well in the definition so this is our tokenize underscore underscore text function we can pass on a, a text and we can tokenize and then a list comprehension to strip off uh, you know uh, some of the you know white spaces and other things so uh, then is uh, defining function for expanding contraction so this is uh, very much similar to what we have discussed in the previous lecture so this part is same just uh, in a functional form here and uh, define a function for lemmatization so here uh, you can see few changes in the sense uh, that we have defined a function uh, you know pures underscore tag underscore text and within this uh, you know another function is defined that is essentially to convert pen tree bank back to tag to word net tag because uh, you know that is uh, typically required for you know uh, you know uh, because word net lemmatizer that class uh, lemmatization that we have to perform it actually checks for you know uh, pure tag annotation based on word net formats so we will have to convert the you know pen tree bank, uh, bank tags to word net uh, you know tags so for this uh, this uh, we have defined this function so essentially it is uh, doing a mapping sort of thing so any pure tag that is starting with capital j will returning wn dot adj and similarly for others also now uh, next line uh, there we are tokenizing the text and then these uh, you know using these tokens we are attaching uh, pure tags there using nltk dot pos underscore tag and then next thing is uh, we are uh, doing uh, you know calling this uh, you know uh, this uh, this pen underscore wn underscore tags function uh, within a within a you know uh, a list comprehension here again so for word comma pos tag in tokens uh, underscore t we are you know uh, one thing uh, we are converting uh, this uh, you know uh, pen uh, tree bank based tag to word net tag and uh, we are also uh, doing a case uh, you know transformation here word dot lower so in this uh, uh, function pure underscore tag text finally we will have the kind of pure tagging that would be useful in the lemmatization so next uh, function is uh, lemmatize underscore text so in this you can see here we have uh, you know first thing we have pos tagging we are calling that uh, function that we just discussed pos underscore tag underscore text and then next thing we are lemmatizing the text we again here we are using list comprehension so for word and uh, comma pos tag in tokens p uh, you know we are we are uh, you know uh, performing processing this lemmatization we are calling this uh, you know lemmatize uh, function here word comma pos underscore tag because as you would remember that uh, you know we have to specify the part of a speech along with the along with the you know you know word there so uh, lemmatization will be performed here then we concatenate uh, you know then we concatenate uh, concatenate all these lemmatized tokens here uh, so this will complete our you know uh, this uh, lemmatize underscore, underscore text function here then we have uh, another function 
uh, remove underscore special character. So, this is again uh, the same code uh, you know uh, has put into a you know function form. Uh, so, you can see so this will remove uh, all the special characters uh, you know that might be present uh, in the in the in the text then we have remove stop words so this part also we discussed in the previous lecture so for this uh, we are using the uh, you know this function here and it will perform that is stop word removal the code is similar to what we discussed in the previous lectures uh, now this is the uh, next function is the most important function this is the transform underscore corpus function. So, all these steps that we have discussed till now, now they are going to be called uh, the, the related function associated function uh, function with those steps are going to be called within this function. So, in uh, so in a sense we are combining or chaining all the transformation steps in this function. So, that is why we are calling this transform underscore corpus. So, we will be passing on corpus here. So, corpus as we say as we talked about is a collection of text documents. So, we are expecting a number of text documents here. So, you can see corpus underscore t and uh, it is an empty list here. So, list of uh, you know uh, text documents which is essentially we can consider a, a, a you know uh, uh, sentences or paragraphs of text uh, in a list uh, you know kind of form. Uh, so, for text in corpus we will perform these uh, you know steps. So, first expand contraction function is being called and then lemmatize underscore text is being called then remove special characters then remove stop words. So, all these uh, you know uh, functions are being called here and uh, all the transformation steps in a sense are you know combined here. Then we uh, once all this processing is done then uh, the corpus underscore t the empty uh, corpus that we just defined will be appending this text there and uh, in this fashion all the we will be do doing all the processing uh, for a particular text we will take it from the corpus run a loop and uh, you know append that append uh, the processed or transformed text in our uh, new corpus uh, list there. So, this will this function will return us the transformed corpus uh, right. So, all the transformation steps would actually be you know performed within this function. So, this we have already defined let me run again. So, what we will do now we will uh, apply this uh, function transform underscore corpus on emma underscore sense. So, we will use transform underscore corpus function to transform or normalize the text corpus here. So, emma underscore sense we have uh, you know uh, you know uh, use uh, we have uh, you know uh, created before. So, let me call this here and it will take some time to complete actually because uh, uh, right now emma underscore uh, you know sense this is uh, based on just one text file and uh, we have you know uh, we had uh, done the sentence tokenization and we had got this. Uh, so, right now uh, you know even this took this much time if we apply later on we will be applying transform underscore corpus to a you know larger corpus uh, rather a proper corpus and you will see it will take slightly more time there. So, let us have a look at uh, this uh, transformed corpus. Now, let us have a look at the text you can see. Uh, just by looking at the text you can immediately see that this has been processed quite well. Emma, Jane, Austin, 1816, volume, chapter, you can see that stop words are gone, you know contractions, uh, contractions are gone, punctuation special characters are gone. So, you can see this is uh, quite nicely this has been you know, uh, uh, you know uh, transformed. Now, you can compare this with the original version. So, you can see here and you can compare this one and the previous output and you can see how the text has been processed. You can see brackets, slash n and all those th and stoppers i and other things and commas and all those things are gone. So, you can see how uh, well this has been transformed. The same code that we have been discussing in previous few lectures has been used in a uh, use, using uh, by creating functions and we have been able to uh, you know transform our corpus. Now, let us move to the next art aspect that is feature extraction. So, as we talked about essentially we would like to arrive at a tabular format where columns would be representing terms and vectors and the you know rows would be representing documents. So, for that uh, we uh, need to understand this feature extraction process. Uh, so, uh, you know essentially we are talking about vector space model or term vector model. <laughs> so, we will be transforming and representing text documents as numeric vectors of specific terms 
that form the vector dimension. So, these specific terms are extracted features. So, these terms are nothing but the extracted features, they would be on the column side and these text documents would be on the rows side. So, now in this particular section we would be talking about uh, you know how to perform this feature extraction process. So, uh, let us take an example. So, we will take a training data set corpus here. So, you can see this is the corpus that we are taking few sentences there in this list and then test data set one sentence there. So, we will be you know uh, looking at using this uh, these uh, you know training and test data set uh, to perform our feature extraction process. So, let me define these uh, you know uh, documents these data sets. Now, uh, first uh, model that is typically used uh, is bag of words model. This is the simplest uh, vectorization model. Uh, so, in this uh, uh, to perform this we will define a function to create a bag of words uh, feature uh, you know extraction or vectorization model. So, for this we will be requiring uh, um, the, this ASCII uh, learn ASCII learn uh, you know uh, sci learn uh, you know uh, this module dot feature underscore extraction dot text and we are importing count vectorizer. So, we will be using an instance of this count vectorizer class from here. So, we are defining our uh, uh, BOW that is bag of words extractor. So, first argument is corpus the you know collection of documents that we will be passing on and n gram range uh, the kind of uh, terms that we want. So, in this n gram range we can specify the range from unigram to you know trigram or even more. So, one is indicates the first one indicates the starting uh, you know n gram range, the second one indicates the ending n gram range. So, here both are ones essentially we are focusing just on the unigrams. So, uh, uh, first thing uh, within this uh, function we need to uh, define this uh, an instance of this uh, you know count vectorizer class and within the arguments we are specifying min underscore df as 1. That is, that means we want terms uh, having minimum frequency of one. So that means, uh, you know, whatever terms we would like to extract, features we would like to extract, this would have at least uh, this this much frequency. Then n gram range, the same we are using. We are just focusing on unigrams here. Then uh, using this uh, instance, uh, you know, uh, vectorizer, we'll be uh, calling this fit underscore transform method, uh, and uh, we'll pass on the corpus here and it will extract us uh, the features in a term document matrix. So, this uh, matrix is actually an, a, an a sparse matrix that would be obtained. Uh, later we will have to convert uh, we have want to have a look at the, the matrix in, a, in, a, in the regular form, regular matrix form then we will have to make uh, you know densify it. So, that we will see. So, let me first define this uh, BOW extractor. Then next thing is we are calling this BOW extractor function here to build our vectorizer and get features. Uh, so, we are passing on corpus here. So, let me run this here. Let us have a look at features. You can see this is a 4 into 15 sparse matrix here. So, uh, 4 rows 15 columns and uh, similarly we can obtain you know uh, uh, convert into a matrix form so that uh, you know. Uh, so for this, we are doing two dense uh, method here. So let's have a look. So you can see this is the matrix form, the tabular kind of form. Right now, in the matrix, later we'll convert into a data frame so that uh, uh, the understandability understand understandability of uh, this data is uh, would be much easier. So you can see four uh, you know four rows here and fifteen about fifteen columns. Uh, so this is the this is what uh, these are the this is how we can extract terms or features uh, you know from our corpus. Now, uh, we have already defined our vectorizer instance here. Now, using that we can also transform the test data set that is unseen doc that we had created. So, using that uh, we can also transform this one. Again, we can create a matrix regular matrix here also. So, you can see uh, because we had just one sentence there. So, just one row here. Now, we can also have a look at the feature names. So, for that we can call this get underscore feature underscore names method. So, if I run this and let us have a look at feature names, so you can see these are the features. So, these have been extracted from the corpus text. Uh, so, these are these uh, features are going to become columns and 
the four sentences so they would would be representing the four documents text documents on the row side. So, for a better uh, understanding of this data set let us use this uh, data frame. So, we will combine uh, feature vectors into a data frame now. So, in the in the in the in the data frame function we are passing features underscore cm and feature underscore names. If I run this we will have this data frame you can see. So, you can see on the column side we have all the terms and are brown clouds dark dew expected. So, all these terms that were part of the corpus example that we had and 4 rows 0, 1, 2, 3. So, you can see this is how we have been able to convert, uh, we have been able to extract features and you can see the tabular layout how we have been able to convert and the values these are nothing but you know frequencies. So, this is based on bag of words. So, frequency. Uh, now, let us have a look at the uh, you know test document uh, that we had. So, unseen document. So, let me get this you can see just one row and same features. Now, let us move to the uh, more important model, uh, more important vectorization model that is TF IDF model. So, uh, this uh, uh, particular model solves an important uh, you know problem of you know bag of words model. So, there uh, you know words with higher frequencies uh, you know uh, they might uh, you know they might dominate because uh, they might have higher frequencies across documents. However, some of the more relevant words or so the more relevant words in the sense uh, if we are doing a text class classification problem. So, there are going to be certain classes uh, that are going to be you know so documents are going to be uh, categorized into those classes. So, certain words might be more relevant for this process. Uh, but they might have lower frequency. So, in bag of words model uh, that uh, problem is there that relevant words uh, might have lower weightage and uh, the you know meaningless words with higher frequency might uh, end up having higher weightage. So, to get rid of that problem we have this T of ID of uh, you know model. Uh, so, for this uh, we are defining this function to create T of ID of feature extraction or a vectorization model based on BOW features. So, whatever bag of words features we have extracted. So, from that we are trying to transform it into a TF-IDF feature. So, within this uh, we are using TF-IDF transformer and an instance of this. There we have to specify in the first argument the you know, normalization that we want to perform. So, L2 means Euclidean kind of uh, normalization, a smooth idea of uh, you know uh, here. Uh, uh, you know we, we would like to uh, you know in the in the in the document frequency we would like to add one so that uh, we are able to prevent zero divisions huge idea of is true so this will uh, define our uh, you know this transformer tf idea of transformer then we'll call uh, call a fit underscore transform method uh, on 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 bag of word features and that will transform these bag of word features into tf idea of features so this is the function so this function takes bag of word features and transform them into of IDF features. So, let us define this. Then uh, you know let us uh, you know use this uh, function to uh, you know create uh, to transform bag of word features into uh, TF IDF features. So, this is what we are doing now. So, transform underscore C features underscore C T uh, you know we are calling TF IDF underscore transformer here we are passing features underscore C which were which are actually you know back of word features we which we had you know earlier created. Then next thing is uh, we are uh, you know uh, creating the regular matrix uh, two dense method and then we are creating the data frame we are combining the uh, you know TF IDF feature vectors into a data frame. So, in one go we will be doing all this and you will see that uh, the values will change. Now, instead of uh, earlier we had zeros and ones now we have you know these uh, you know because this has been normalized and because we are applying TF IDF model. So, the values have changed. So, this is more useful model that is you know typically used in test classification information extraction and many other you know uh, applications. Now, uh, uh, we will we'll, uh, we can use this transform method to extract feature from unseen documents. Uh, so, uh, again here we are uh, using this transformer underscore C uh, class and calling transform function to create the features for this unseen document then uh, densifying it for the matrix form and then 
uh, we are combining it into a data frame. So, if I run this you can see uh, we have the data frame for the test data set that we had. Now let us move forward. So, the previous uh, you know uh, you know transformer TF-IDF transformer that we talked about that was based on the bag of word feature. What if we want if, uh, you know we can also create uh, you know these TF-IDF features directly from the uh, or perform TF-IDF uh, vectorization directly from the raw documents. So, for that we need TF-IDF vectorizer class and instance of that. So, now we are going to talk about another function def tfidf underscore extractor. First argument is corpus, next argument is uh, to specify the n-gram range just like we did in the uh, BOW model. So, here again we will specify, uh, we will define our uh, uh, class instance tfidf vectorizer class instance, minimum frequency, min def, uh, norm, uh, normalization procedure, smooth idea of uh, you know just to uh, as we discussed. Uh, to prevent uh, zeros division and huge IDF and uh, range. And then uh, we will be uh, calling fit underscore transform method to actually extract the feature based on the vectorizer that we just defined. So, let me define this and then uh, now let us apply this TF IDF extractor on the corpus uh, and we will have our vectorizer and features TF IDF features. Now, again uh, let us convert uh, you know uh, these features uh, you know uh, this sparse matrix into a dense matrix and then into a data frame. So, you can see this is the output. So, this is directly uh, by using uh, the extractor function where we are directly extracting the features from the raw documents. So, you can see the output. If we compare this output with the previous one you will see the same uh, numbers are there. The only difference is the earlier one was from the uh, you can see here the earlier one was from the uh, back of word feature this one is computed from the raw documents. Now, uh, we can apply this on the unseen documents also. So, let me run this and you can see in the output same output and uh, this is uh, directly from the raw documents. Now, uh, let us move forward. Now, with this uh, uh, we have been able to reach, so all uh, till now what we have been able to cover, we have been able to transform the unstructured text into a structured form. So, all these steps so that we talked about uh, whether tokenization, lamentization uh, and uh, you know stopper removals and many other things and then uh, extracting features. So, essentially all those steps uh, were uh, you know were to actually transform text into a structured form and you could see the data frame, you could see the column terms, the relevant words uh, uh, you know that uh, you know we can extract and in a you know uh, you know in a matrix kind of layout in a tabular layout. So, we have been able to reach uh, that place till now. Now, what we will do we will take an example a text classification problem to see how we can uh, build uh, you know uh, text classification models now. So, for this uh, we will be using this 20 news groups data set. So, this data set it has around 18,000 news group post spread across 20 different categories or topics. So, essentially this is a 20 class classification problem. So, we will be classifying these 18,000 news group post into one of these 20 categories. Uh, so, for this we first need to import this data set. Data set. So, for this we need again sklearn dot data sets and we will import fetch underscore 20 news groups this is uh, the data set. So, for this uh, we are defining uh, this function get underscore data. So, we will be using this fetch underscore 20 news groups and uh, certain arguments we would like to remove the headers, footers and quotes from the text. So, that only the relevant text is there which we will be processing later. So, let me define this uh, get underscore data function. Now, we will use this one to obtain the data. So, you can see the download uh, process has started. Uh, so, once it uh, completes then uh, we will be, uh, we'll be using this data set to build our classifier. So, these posts are to be classified into one of the 20 categories that are there and we will see how all the you know, uh, you know transformation steps that we have discussed how they are going to be used here. 
So, it is still running. So, you can see uh, here in the in and within brackets asterisk is there. So, till asterisk is there till a number is assigned there that means that particular you know you know uh, code is still running. So, let it download. Uh, next thing is uh, you can have a look at the type of data set also once the download is completes and then we will be uh, will be have will have a look at the classes uh, class names that are there target names. So, our target variable what are the 20 classes that are there what are the names there. So, we will have a look at uh, that also uh, this data is still being downloaded. So, we will see you know many of uh, you know uh, the tasks that we will be performing now. Uh, they are going to be perform. They are going to be performed on full corpuses, so they will take certain times. The idea is to demonstrate you whatever code uh, we have till now discussed, how that is, uh, you know, uh, going to work on, you know, a real problem where we are using a full corpus and building a, you know, a, a you know, full uh, full, uh, you know, grown model. So. Uh, uh, so downloading has complete. You can see 135 is assigned. Now, let us have a look at the data set you can see uh, sklearnutils.bunch. Now, we will print the target names. So, essentially these are the classes. So, you can see here uh, ALT, Ethism, uh, then uh, com.graphics. So, similarly sci.mad, sci.space, sci.crypt. So, these are different target names, these are different categories, different classes uh, where these uh, you know uh, documents these news group posts are to be classified. Uh, so, let us move forward. Now, let us obtain the corpus and labels. So, from this data set that we have just uh, you know uh, obtained, we will uh, you know create our corpus of documents and labels as well, labels for the target variable. So, let me run this. Now, the next thing that we will be doing is uh, that a particular corpus might have a number of uh, empty text documents. Uh, so, um, you know many times you would like to remove them. So, for this we are defining this function remove underscore empty underscore docs. So, first argument is corpus, second argument is labels. So, again within this we are defining our corpus underscore f as empty list, labels underscore f as an empty list. Now, we are running this for loop doc LB, you know, label lbl in zip corpus comma labels and we are uh, using this strip method to find out whether document is uh, you know empty or not. Uh, if it is not empty we will append it labels uh, same case. Uh, so, uh, in this fashion we will be creating our filtered corpus and filtered labels and uh, we will be removing empty text documents. So, let me define this function. We can apply this here on our corpus. Uh, so, let me run this. And let us have a look at the corpus here. You can see this is the corpus that we have after uh, the removal process. Let us have a look at the labels. You can see the labels. So, uh, labels uh, you know each number is indicating the uh, you know of uh, the class name that we just uh, you know saw in the previous output. So, 10 the class you know uh, that is uh, you know 10th class, 3rd class and uh, you know in that sense. So, it is 0 indexed again and here you can have a look at the, the you know uh, documents. So, you can see this is a list of uh, you know in essence this is a list of string values you can take in that form you can see comma here and uh, next uh, you know uh, document is starting. So, in this fashion they have been labeled also. So, we got the corpus of text documents and uh, you know labels also. Now, let us have a look at the let us take an example, let us take a sample document and we will also have a look at it is the label index and class name. So, document with index value 10. So, let us have a look at here corpus 3. So, this is the uh, corp, you know you know uh, you know fourth uh, text document that is there you can check it back there and uh, let us have a look at its label 3 and you can see the name. So, if I go back you can see it is ibm.pc.hardware. So, if I go back to the list that we had earlier generated, so you can see it will be at fourth place. Uh, you can see here, you can see uh, com.sys.ibm.pc.hardware. So, you can see 
um, the corpus document and their labeling we have been able to obtain and uh, one uh, sample document we have been able to cross check in this fashion. Now, let us move forward. Now, next thing as we discussed in our previous courses uh, business analytics and data mining modeling using R, uh, we typically partition our data set into training and test. So, here we will be using sqlearn.model underscore selection module and import this train underscore test underscore illustrate function to perform this partitioning process. So, again we are writing our own wrapper function here prepare underscore data sets corpus first argument label second argument and the proportion is third argument test proportion. Then within this we are calling this train as, uh, underscore test underscore illustrate function and specifying uh, you know certain arguments here and this will give us uh, the partition. So, let me define this. So, let us uh, call this uh, you know function prepare underscore data sets and we will have our training underscore c that is corpus uh, training data part test part test underscore t test partition then same for labels also. So, this is done. So, you can have a look at the train underscore c this is our training partition now test underscore c this is our test partition. So, you can see they have been randomly these uh, you know text documents have been allocated to these partitions. Now, uh, we are going to call our transform underscore corpus uh, function that we had earlier de defined. So, in this uh, we will be uh, transforming this unstructured text as you can see in those two partition training and test partition uh, into a form that can be later on used uh, in our when we apply our machine learning algorithms. So, transform underscore corpus for both training underscore c and test underscore c both these uh, you know partitions and we will be performing expanding contraction, pierce tagging, lemmatization, special character removal, stop or removal tokenization. So, all these uh, things are going to be performed this. So, if I run this it will take a lot more time. So, we will have to patiently wait here. So, this process because a lot of a uh, lot more processing will go on because this is full corpus that we have taken. So, it will take lot more time to actually you know take each document one by one you know and process it. So, it will take lot more time here. So, you will have to wait. So, you can see that asterisk is there in that particular you know code that we are executing and uh, it will uh, take time. So, we will have to wait. It will take minutes. And uh, once this transformation process is complete, then we will move to the next part that is extracting features. And uh, once we are ready with our you know vectorization process over, once we are ready with our you know a tabular format, then we can apply our machine learning algorithms for the classification problem. So, to demonstrate uh, a particular text classification model, we will be using support vector machines uh, as an example here. So, we would not be going into details of support vector machine that you can refer any uh, you know any uh, you know uh, you know uh, books related to text mining data mining and understand that particular method. Here we are just trying to demonstrate how in using Python platform and specifically NLTK module how we are able to model this. So, our focus is on the modeling part and how that can be performed in this uh, you know Python platform. So, uh, once this uh, transformation is over, we will be executing some more you know steps here. So, uh, you can see this uh, uh, they have been able to uh, process this. So, uh, you can this uh, th this took uh, I think about uh, 2 to 3 minutes or even more to actually transform these uh, you know these partitions. So, this gives you about the uh, this gives you the idea about how much time it might take in uh, you know processing uh, you know unstructured uh, you know uh, text there. So, that is how you will also get the idea about big data analytics and how this uh, unstructured data that is there and why it requires big IT investment big setups to actually process those large amounts of data. So, uh, this is small example itself is demonstrating this aspect. So, let us have a look at the uh, train underscore ct this transform text here. You can see now the nicely transformed text is quite visible here same for the test partition here. 
So, now the next thing will be uh, extracting features from uh, uh, training uh, partition. So, first thing bag of words feature the another uh, model that we will use is TF IDF feature. So, again just like uh, you know previously done uh, we will uh, you know you know uh, generate build our vectorizer and obtain features. So, first bow underscore extractor then we will uh, you know con we will get features for the test data set. Similarly, for TF IDF we will use TF IDF extractor that we had defined earlier and uh, we will obtain uh, features for the training partition then we will obtain features for the test partition. So, let me run this and uh, we will get the features from here. Once this is done uh, we will move to uh, we will tokenize the document. So, in this we are running this, uh, this list comprehension where you can see for each text in the training partition and each text in the text uh, you know test partition also in the next line of code uh, we are tokenizing. So, let me run this one also and we will have the you know tokenized documents. Now, next aspect is evaluation matrix. So, whenever we are uh, you know building a classifier, a classification model, we would also like to uh, you, know, uh, you know compute certain matrix to check the performance, how well our model has done in terms of uh, you know uh, classification or prediction for that matter as well. So, we will talk about uh, you know these matrix also. So, the matrix are quite similar to what we have discussed in our previous courses. Uh, business analytics and data mining modeling using R. So, here we are just defining a fu function uh, get underscore matrix where we are passing on actual labels and predicted labels and computing accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score. So, for this uh, we are using this uh, matrix uh, you know module and uh, there we have accuracy underscore score, precision underscore score, recall underscore score and F1 underscore uh, you know you know function and we are using that. Uh, we will be using that to actually you know, you know compute these matrix. So, let me define this function first because later on as we will build the classifier we will be calling this function. Now, uh, next we are defining a, a function to actually uh, you know build the model using training data set and then evaluate the model performance on test data set. So, in this uh, wrapper function this is generic kind of function we are passing on the classifier. So, this could be based on any technique SVM or NeoBase or any other thing any other machine learning algorithm and we are passing on train underscore training features uh, you know training labels test features test labels and uh, first uh, you know code is first line of code is about building the model the classifier dot fit passing training uh, features and training labels. Then uh, predicting uh, predict using model. So, we are predicting the test partition using the classifier dot predict uh, you know uh, you know uh, function here and then we will uh, use our uh, you know user defined get underscore matrix function and we will be uh, evaluating model uh, you know prediction performance. So, let me define this function as well. Now, as an example uh, we are going to build a classifier using support vector machine here. So, for this uh, we need uh, this SGDA classifier uh, you know in, you know uh, class and we will create an instance of this class SGDA classifier and we will define this instance. So, first parameter loss uh, spec uh, specified as hinge because we are just building a linear SVM maximum iteration 1000 and uh, you know TOL 0.2 uh, that is uh, just to define the uh, you know uh, allowed loss uh, there. So, let me define this SVM. And now we will call our train underscore predict underscore evaluate model to actually build the model as well as uh, actually you know evaluate the performance. So, for you know training uh, you know for that you know uh, this one for using bag of words. So, let me run this. So, first one is using bag of word feature you can see accuracy 0.65 and other metrics also. Now, next one is uh, using uh, you know support vector machine with TF IDF. Uh, you know features. So, let me run this and you can see the accuracy is 0 0.77. So, uh, accuracy if we compare with the bag of words this has gone up. So, that is why T of idea is more uh, is common more more popular vectorization model uh, when we require to build uh, you know when we whenever we require to extract features. Now, uh, uh, we can also create generate our classification matrix remember this was a 20 class you know uh, classifier model. 
So, we will use uh, our pandas uh, you know function here uh, mat matrix dot confusion underscore matrix we will pass on test underscore l which are the actual labels for the test partition and uh, our prediction uh, TFID of predictions here. So, if I run this uh, then we call data frame here to uh, get an ICER output here and you can see we have a 20 by 20 matrix and uh, in, in our previous course business analytics data mining modeling is, uh, using R we typically used to take 2 classes and it was a 2 class 2 matrix typically here it is 20 class 20 matrix here and uh, you can see uh, so in terms of understanding this matter you can see uh, uh, you know uh, class 0 correctly classified as 0 136 times and twice uh, classified as 1 twice classified as you know a class you know class with index 2 and similarly for others class 1 correctly classified as class 1 209 times. So, the diagonal values you see they are on the higher side. So, that is indicating that the class has been correctly classified into its actual class. Other numbers are actually misclassification. So, this 20 class 20 matrix is actually depicting the full performance of the model. So, this with this we have been able to cover our you know text mining modeling part also. Uh, this was uh, mainly using an LTK module in uh, you know uh, in combination with other modules other functions as well. So, with this we have been able to uh, you know complete uh, last lecture in this course as well uh, and uh, you know uh, in this course we have been able to cover the introductory part of text mining what kind of problems are there and what kind of uh, you know uh, concepts are there. So, briefly we were able to cover uh, those aspects in initial few lectures. And then we started our discussion on Python because the knowledge of Python extensive knowledge of Python is actually required uh, for the analytics especially for the text mining modeling. So, a lot more a number of lectures were actually dedicated for you know uh, Python there. Then uh, once uh, a, a major chunk of Python was covered which is relevant for the analytics then we came back to uh, you know our text mining modeling and there again uh, in text mining modeling a lot more time is devoted in processing unstructured text. So, uh, you know lot more steps for processing text were discussed as uh, we have been you know in last few lectures they were dedicated for this and in this last lecture uh, using a particular you know we have been able to build a SBM model a classifier model as well. So, that completes our uh, journey in the sense we have been able to uh, you know uh, talk about uh, text mining modeling and python for analytics and also uh, you know uh, the uh, you know text mining text, po text processing part the text transformation part and also uh, in this particular lecture we were able to demonstrate a particular one example one text mining modeling example where we build this classifier for the 20 class scenario. So, with this we complete uh, uh, you know our course and uh, if uh, depending on the uh, response for this course if there is a demand we will continue uh, you know uh, discussion on few more aspects of text mining modeling maybe uh, you know a number of other techniques and maybe we might also focus on how to you know scrap data from you know using web APIs and other aspects like this. Uh, however, uh, you know uh, for right now uh, uh, thank you for the uh, thank you for being with this course and good luck for the future. Thank you.